This is Jan Bratt, and I'm going to talk about one of my characters from my children's book, The Mermaid. Now, The Mermaid is a, the Goldilocks character, and the three octopuses are take the place of the three bears. When I was in Okinawa, Japan, I was snorkeling and saw a baby giant Pacific octopus, and that's when I thought, what a perfect character to take the place of the bears because they're so interesting they're very very smart and they would be very fun to draw they were a little harder to draw than i thought but luckily i had the chance to experience a octopus at the new england aquarium where i was able to have an arms on experience with it with her her name was sai and I'm going to take all those experiences and try to wrap them up into my drawing that I'll do for you. And it's going to be a little bit of an art lesson as well. So I'll put my book down for a moment. And I have some markers here. I'm going to start with an oval shape. And that is going to form the mantle of the octopus. Many people think it's the head, but actually as I continue down, this is where the head is, and you can see little bumps that are where the eyes are. So this would be considered the head of the octopus, right in this area. And this is the mantle where a lot of its internal, internal organs are. And here are her eyes. They're kind of rectangular shaped. And then there's almost a little bit of a raised area that comes down from between the eyes. But this is a good time to tell you that uh, octopus don't have any bones. They're completely squishy. And the only thing that's hard in the octopus is their beak, which is very small. It's like a parrot's beak. There's a top and a bottom. But you don't usually see it. It's hidden between where the, all their arms converge underneath the octopus. So you will not see the beak in this drawing. But I will have the eight arms, and I'm going to make the arms show the underneath part so I can show their beautiful tentacles. Now, when you draw the eight arms, you'll, you can get very thin at the very ends of them because they use those, the ends of their arms to feel out in between the coral or the ocean floor, looking for prey, or just making their way around the, the sea bottom. They can they move around in many different ways. For example, they can use their jets. Let me draw one of their jets. It looks like almost like a funnel, and that will can propel them, or they can grasp with their arms. And I hope I don't say tentacles, because the correct word for an octopus is arms, and they have eight. That's where you get the octo for an octopus. And so I have to keep track. One, two, three, four, five. And sometimes they're very agile with the arms, and they can curl them up and make all kinds of designs with them. And then it gets even more complicated. So I have one, two, three, four, five in the front, and I'll put a several in the back, which you wouldn't normally see. Or they might be slightly hidden by its the main part of the octopus, five, six, seven. I guess we have one more. We'll just show the tip of a little arm right here because I'll, I want to show those suckers. So this part is fairly easy to draw. And when you draw the arms, draw a little bit of skin hitching each one together. It almost looks like um, an umbrella or it, it extends down. And they will use that to capture their prey. And then right underneath, if you could see, see if this was see-through, you could see where the beak would be at the convergence of those arms. So I'm going to, now that I've gotten the black and white um, drawn on the paper, I'm going to color it in with my markers. Normally I would use watercolors, but this way it will be a little bit faster. And I'm going to start with a kind of a pink color. The, the uh, challenge about octopuses, are that they come in so many colors and they change their colors. They're really chameleons of the sea. They can change not just their basic color, but they can also make spots, stripes, and they tend to mimic the area that they're, that's around them. But sometimes, like in my book, as they get agitated or 
interested in something, they will turn from a kind of a pinkish shade to a darkish red uh, shade. And that's what Cy the octopus did when I was looking at her at the New England Aquarium. So I'm just going to sketch this in. I'm going to start the octopus out with this pinkish color. But if I were um, drawing, you know, a na a natural an octopus in its natural environment, it may look quite a bit like the coral that it, it was moving by, or the sand of the. The one I saw was sand colored because it was right near some sand. So, he, oh, I've got to remember, I've got to ro leave room for those suckers, which are the, uh, on the underside of the arms. And not only can they change shape, they call them shape changers, they can also raise little bumps on the surface of their skin. And um, that's going to be an interesting thing to illustrate because I can make a little a bit of an expression, because a lot of times they raise, they're called papillae, those little bumps. And sometimes they mimic coral or rocks, but I'm going to make it look like the octopus has eyebrows, so I'm going to use my artistic license. And if I leave some white space, that's where the suckers are going to go. And that will be probably the most fun thing to draw. So here I go, just trying to fill that in. But I don't mind if a little white shows through, because it shows a little bit of the texture of that octopus. So now I've got a little bit of a darker color that I will go around the outside of the octopus, it, octopus and it will make it appear almost like it's three-dimensional. I'm not sure that that's the right color. I think I need something that's a little bit more of an orangey color, not quite as not as uh, brilliant. So here are those little papillae eyes, and then around the eyes, and wait till we get to the eyes. They're also very unique and interesting. An octopus is, is unlike any other creature. Probably the squid is similar, but because it's underwater, but it's not like a horse or an elephant or a dog or a cat, even though it is very highly intelligent. They only live for four years. And in those four years, they um, have their whole lifespan. So when they live, the mother female lays their eggs, she tends to them, but then she dies before they really become baby octopuses and float away into the currents. So now you can see how I've used a little bit of a shading on the outside of the octopus to give it a more of a three-dimensional look. And maybe I'll put a little bit of this darker color on the arms that are behind so that it will look like it. those are further away. So that's a trick that artists will use. And then I don't mind filling in a little of those white spaces I left with my marker because she's so textured. So I guess this would be the mother octopus. <laughs> now the, uh, and these are the papillae that I made look like a little bit like eyebrows. And now I'll get that more of an orangey color that I started out with and then changed my mind to, to make those look a little bit more distinct. And then I have even a darker color. Now, if I were doing this for the book, I would have my watercolors, and it would take me days to do the octopus. But this is something I hope that you can look at and copy and improve upon in your art studio or your space that you do art in, whether it be school. And this could you could do this with crayons, too. And then let's make a little bit of a exaggeration of the eyes because, of course, as human beings, we look at the eyes to see where the expression is going to be. Now, the cool thing about octopus is the vertical, the pupil is horizontal. So my pupils are the black part of my eye, and they're round, and the octopuses are slanted. So I'm going to make a little bit of the black pupil showing, and then around it, the iris well, I would call my iris blue. It's kind of bluish gray. But in this octopus, it's kind of silvery. And I'm leaving a little bit of white right around the pupil. And that's what they look like, really. 
and sometimes that, that part will change color. So you could really do anything you wanted. Could be yellow, or but a lot of times there's like a metal metallic component, so it looks a little silvery or gold, so that's why I use my silver. Now it's, I'm going to work on the um, suckers. So the, when I was handling the octopus at the aquarium, I was amazed at how strong those suckers were. And they, she could have really pulled me right into the tank. I was a little bit surprised by that. And they kind of line up. And they get start out larger near the body, and then they get smaller as they go down the arm. And they, I felt like she could pull me in, in the tank. But then the aquarist, he, his name was Bailey, and he would always take the, suck, the arms off me so I wouldn't get pulled in. <laughs> and if I was by myself, I don't know, because we always think of things with just two arms, and they have eight. So it's very hard to keep track of where all those arms were. And she was very friendly, but a little bit rascally. So I would say the closest character of an animal that I would relate to the octopus would be the elephant, because they're like that. They're not like un just totally friendly like a dog or a cat, pretty friendly, but a little bit more aloof. The elephant has kind of a not always, you wouldn't consider an elephant man's best friend, that's for sure. They kind of ha are rascally or have a mind of their own. And this octopus that we saw at the aquarium, Sai, she would take her funnel and she'd blast us with cold seawater. And then Bailey would put his hand up because it made, it made it like a little game with the two of them. So their uh, suckers are kind of a pink color and then inside is a little bit of a more lavender. And then it turns white and then there's like a little dot in the center of each one. So all of you who like to make patterns, that would be a kind of fun thing to draw with your octopus. So around the pink, inside of the pink rather, there's a little bit of a lavender color. And then I'll put a little dot. And there, there are those suckers. And they can, the ex octopus are extremely fast. They can latch on with their suckers. I even saw on the internet an octopus attack a shark and was able to capture that shark and then it absolutely ate the shark right up, and it was a pretty big shark, too. I never felt I was in any danger with the octopus that I met, but I don't know if I were in the wild and saw a giant Pacific octopus, which can grow to be over 30 feet, if I would want to get too close to it. I think I would observe it from a distance. So I have my gray here. This octopus is almost done. And I just want to complete that little detail of in the center of the, of the suckers is a little dot. And so there are neurocells in the arms. It's very confusing to most of us who think of the brain as being the nerve center of the, the animal or creature. But the, there's actually nerve cells in, in the arms. And they can, if it, this sounds really bizarre, but if an arm is cut off, it will sometimes go fl swim along and latch onto something, even th though it's not attached to the octopus. So this sounds really bizarre to a human being that have pets like dogs, cats, or birds. But this is a very unusual creature. You really um, have to study it to really comprehend how unusual it is. And do they have personalities? Yes. Um, I was told that by the aquarist at the New England Aquarium, that every octopus was a little bit different, and that I hope that you'll see the personalities that I drew in my book, The Mermaid. Oh, and last of all, very important, because I know that a lot of you are artists yourselves, and artists should always sign their, their name. So. There's my name and my octopus that I drew especially for you. <laughs>